y'all know God is great. God is great. God is great. So this is your last few minutes to get your worship in. Glory to God, because we serve a great God, and he is mighty. Hallelujah. Thank you all so very much. Hallelujah. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, Victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. God is so good. On this morning, I want to give honor to our apostles in their absence. I praise and I thank God for them allowing me this opportunity to stand before you. And I don't want to be remiss. Some of you don't know her, but I want my daughter-in-law to just wave her hand. Nikki, just wave your hand. That's my baby over there. That's my daughter-in-law. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So on this morning, I just want to do a little refresh of what Apostle Tony had spoken about. You can have your seats. Glory to God. But Father, I want to, first of all, I want to give God glory. Father, I thank you on this morning for the word that we are about to receive. You said that men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And so on this morning, we come to thank you for your word. You said heaven and earth will pass away, but your word is forever going to stand. So now, Father, as we come upon this hour, we encroach your word with reverence. We encroach your word, God, knowing, God, that your word is what is the sustaining power. And we thank you and we praise you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So on last week, glory to God, hallelujah, Apostle Tony came forth and he preached a message entitled, The Grace, This Grace Called Favor. Ha, favor. Come on, tell somebody, there's a grace called favor. And many of us, we know about this word favor because you call somebody on the phone and you said, can you do me a favor? And they will say, yes, I can or no, I can't. But on this morning, I just want to rehearse a little bit of what he said. He came out of 2 Corinthians 8 and 7 and it says, but as for you, excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all earnestness. And in our love for you, see that you excel in this act of grace also. God wants us to excel in the act of grace also. And Apostle Tony also laid the platform for us to understand that we are the exception to the rule, meaning that the rules that are held up for other people, those are not the rules that we abide by because we understand that when you are the exception, there is no holding you back. When you are the exception, there's no stopping you, there's no blocking you, and so everybody else can say these are the protocols but I come to tell you the protocols do not apply to me because I am the exception everything about me is fearfully and wonderfully made and because of that because of that I come on this morning to share with you that not only are you the exception and the fact that you're next but I come to share with you for a few moments that there is a grace, hallelujah, there is a crown of favor upon you. Let me say that again. There is a crown of favor upon you. What am I talking about? Well, let's look at Psalms 5 and 12. In Psalms 5 and 12, it says, For you, Lord, you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover or compass him with favor as a shield, meaning that everywhere I go, there is a shield of favor that covers me. Favor on my head, favor in my front, favor in my back, favor to my left, favor to my right, because God has covered and he has compassed me with favor. So when you see me coming, I'm a favor magnet. In case you didn't know who we are, as people of God, as children of God, we carry the favor of God. And so the scripture says God has crowned us with favor. Now the thing that I like about this word cover, in the military we had a saying, cover me as I throw my grenade. So I want you to understand that God is covering you. Every morning that you rise up, you're covered with favor. Every morning that you walk into the workplace, God said, I am not only covering you, but I've crowned you 
with favor. So when you look in the mirror, make sure you look there and you say, let me straighten up my crown because I'm crowned with favor, coming and going. So the word cover in the Greek is sana, which refers to a standing shield. God says, I have a shield that is stood up in front of you. And this is almost like a door. It's like a barrier. And the shield is there to protect you so that no one can encroach or harm you. But the interesting thing that I like about the word cover, so we have cover or compass, is the fact that the word compass means to be crowned with. So in the scripture, in Psalms 5 and 12, it says, you bless the righteous thank you, Lord. But you bless him by covering him. You bless him by compassing him with favor. In the Old Testament, it is so interesting that grace and favor is used interchangeably. They both have the same Greek word, which is charis. So that word grace is defined as undeserved favor something that you don't deserve. Sometimes when you don't deserve things, God still gives it to you. Why? Because I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. See, you've got to testify to who you are, not just about whose you are, but who you are. Who are you in Christ? I am crowned with the favor of God. And so the scripture says here that the definition of grace is undeserved favor. I didn't earn it. It's something that was freely given to me. Favor or blessing is a bestowed as a gift. It's free, and it is never attributed to the work that I've done. So that means I didn't have to work for grace. Some people are working to get things done, but God said, the grace that I gave you when I saved you, when I sanctified you, when I made you whole, and I set you apart, you didn't have to work for that. That was my grace. But then there's this also this other word that the scripture talks about in Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. It says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And it is not for yourself. It is a gift from God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Because God knows sometimes we become boastful, we become prideful. But God said, the grace that I'm giving you, you can't boast about it because you didn't work for it. It's a gift. And when someone gives you a gift, you ought to be glad about it because not everybody is giving gifts in this day and age. So God, we thank you for the gift of grace. So now let's look at this word, favor. Favor is the grace of God. Wait a minute. We said favor is grace and grace is favor. Okay, God, I'm going to track with you. Favor, it means to be acceptance, goodwill, and preferential treatment. Glory to God. Preferential treatment. Mm. Wait a minute. You mean I got preferential treatment? That is preferred treatment. That means you bought an airline ticket to sit and coach. And they looked over and they saw you and they said, excuse me, ma'am, I'm talking about you. Can you come here, please? Uh, you've been upgraded to first class. Glory to God. Preferential treatment. That's what the favor of God will do for you. That's what the grace of God will do for you. And I heard apostles said, we know how to do church. We know how to operate in the church, but when it comes to the workplace, when it comes to the outside, the doors of the church, how does that grace operate? How does that favor operate? I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. The Bible says that favor is not a feeling. Sometimes people try to, well, is it, can I work it up? Can I do, no, it's not a feeling. It's not something that you earn. It is a gift. And so in Isaiah 30 and 18, it says, the Lord longs to be gracious to you. God wants to be gracious to you. God wants to favor you because he said he will crown you with favor. And so he wants to rise up and he wants to show you compassion. No wonder in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, when it came to Jehoshaphat, and we're going to look at how grace and favor is operating because sometimes when we encroach a situation or we're dealing with a situation, people tend to count you out. They try to put an X where God has put a check. They try to shut a door where God has opened a door. 
They try to say that person or this person, they won't amount to anything because they didn't come for nothing. But I come to tell you, I may not look like much, but the grace that God has on my life, the favor that God has on my life is about to elevate me into places where you thought that I would not be able to go. And so the thing about God's favor is God's favor shows up in some of the most interesting times in your life. In this particular situation in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, Jehoshaphat had had many experiences in battle and he had won many battles before we got to chapter 20. But now in chapter 20 of 2 Chronicles, the word came that a whole host of an army was coming up against Jehoshaphat. And because he heard that word, he began to fear. I come to tell you the favor of God does not call for fear. The favor of God covers you in such a way that no matter how many people comes up against you, no matter what the report is, the favor of God is able to step in and to make a difference. Anybody ever experienced his favor? So all of these armies are coming up, and Jehoshaphat does not know what to do. But sometimes when you are in that place where you don't know what to do, you don't know what to say, God's favor will just slip up. And he will come in in such a way that you would have no other choice but to say, it is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in my sight. Anybody got that testimony? It is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our sight. And so these armies have came upon Jehoshaphat. And the word of the Lord says to Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, you don't have to fight in this battle. Sometimes we experience things in life, people of God, and we try to put our hands to it. I want to submit to you, instead of putting your hands to it, look into the mirror and say, God, you crowned me with favor. And because you crowned me with favor, that word says you covered me and you compass me. So in this situation, God, I need to see your crowning. It needs to be evident to all that you are with me because the Bible says if God be for me, who can be against me? And so these five armies came up against Jehoshaphat. And God speaks to the word to him and he says, you don't have to fight in this. All I need you to do is set yourself. You see, sometimes in the workplace when we set ourselves, people wondering, well, this is happening, this is happening. And they're waiting to see your action. They're waiting to see what you're going to say. But we, the people of God, we've got to know how to operate in the workplace. We know how to operate in the church, and we know how to say glory to God, and we know how to go off into tongues. But in the workplace, hallelujah, you can't throw up your hands like that. They will come get you and say, we need to send her to the hospital. But there is a way that you can operate in the workplace because you know that God has graced you and favored you. You can just say a small little prayer and say, Lord, I just want to thank you. And so the word of God came and it said to Jehoshaphat, look, don't fight, just set yourself. And he set himself and he listened to the word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord said, the battle is not yours, it belongs to God. People of God, when God has favored you, you don't have to go get no gun, no knives, none of that. God has favored you. The battle is not yours. It belongs to God. And God is about to step in to some of our situations. If we will just yield to him, if we will just get in a place and surrender to him, God will step in and he will turn your situation around. That is the favor of God, where God is turning the thing around. And so God turned it around. God has endorsed you. Everything about you that was obscure now comes to the forefront. Where you was number 189 in the line, God has said to the person who is calling the numbers, call 189. And even though they're on number 50, here you come and they point you out because you are the exception. Because God is favoring you. And when God favors you, you do not have to go through the normal process. It does not apply to me. The normal methodology of the world does not apply to me. I am a favor magnet. I have favor coming and going. So what you think should happen to me is not going to happen because God has favored me. Yeah. 
The Bible says, for the eyes of the Lord, it runs to and fro. God is looking throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Make sure your heart is perfect towards God. That is all part of the favor of God. When your heart is perfect towards God, he said he will even make your enemies be at peace with you. He will make your enemies be at peace with you. When your heart is perfect towards God, they will not even be able to call anyone until they call you. How do I know that to be the truth? Because that's what happened to me. See, in 2007, when I got out the Army, I was getting ready to leave. They do what the military call a farewell, and they said to me, uh, Burrell, apply for this position in Virginia. Virginia was not even on my radar. I was trying to get back to Fort Hood. I was trying to get back to either Fort Gordon, someplace where I knew it was hot. I was trying to get rid of snow. I didn't want to do nothing with snow. Didn't want to see it, didn't even want to hear about it. And in obedience to the words that were spoken to me, now obedience is tied to your favor. In obedience to the words of my supervisor, apply for this position, I applied. I'm going to show you how obedience is tied to your favor. Not only did I apply for the position, and I didn't want to, let's be honest, I didn't want to. She also said to me, every piece of military paper, I want you to PDF it and put it in your AKO, which is our military email. And so back then, I'm going to date myself, back then we didn't have any iPhones. We didn't have any droids. We had flip phones. This is 2007, y'all. And so I didn't have a cell phone that you can take from Korea to the United States. And so she said to me, when you leave here, I want you to tell them and put in your resume for them to call me. I go to Antigua, my mother's house, where there is no landline. There is no internet. Laptops are not even in existence because I don't even have one. This is 2007. And I stayed at my mother's house for a week and a half. And one morning I got up to pray and God said, get up and go check the computer. So I got to go all the way down into the town. I'm telling you by favor. I get there and I get on the computer. And in the computer is an email that has been sitting there for over a week and a half. And in the email, the lady says, Miss Burrell, if you can, please respond. I have been told that I cannot hire anyone but you. But you. The last job, the one I didn't want to apply for, is the job that I'm getting. Now, every job I applied for, the salary was here. But this job, this job, somebody say this job, the salary is here. I'm talking to you about favor. Favor will cause people not to be able to do what they want to do. I'm sure they wanted to hire somebody else. But they were told, you can't hire anybody, hire her. That's the favor of God. And so when I show up at the job, the first question is, when was your interview? I didn't have an interview. That's favor. Unexplained favor. The changing agent of favor that will step in. And when you think that you have been counted out, God has counted you in because you are the exception. Come on, y'all. Tell your neighbor, look at me, baby. I'm an exception. Those rules don't apply. God has a way of picking me out of everybody else in a crowd. You may not even know that I'm in the crowd, but because of the favor of God, because I've been crowned with his favor, God knows how to reach out and tell him, call her name, call his name. That is what favor does. That's what favor does for you. And so the Bible says in Proverbs 8.35, it says, for those who find me, you will find life, and you will receive the favor of the Lord. But in order for you to receive favor, you have to find him. 
you must find God who is the author and finisher of our faith. We must find the one who before ended us, the one who created us. You've got to know him and you've got to be obedient and submitted to him. And when you are obedient and submitted, the favor of the Lord will rest on you. It will just rest on you. So now here's the thing. Some people say, well, you know, I've been praying for favor and I've been asking God for favor. So I want to take you through a little scenario here. This is 2 Chronicles chapter 1. Come on, y'all scholars. Y'all get your Bibles. Let's do a little walking. Let's do a little walking. So in 2 Chronicles chapter 1, David has passed on. And Solomon now comes to the position of king. He has never led anybody. His father was doing the leading. And now it's his turn. Talking about your next. When you are next, you need to know how to pray right. You need to be sure you are asking God to endow you with the thing that you actually do need. And not the thing that you think you need. So Solomon becomes the king. And so the scripture says when Solomon became king, because he is God's chosen it says here, God begins to magnify him exceedingly. God is about to magnify somebody exceedingly. I don't know what you're going through in the work area. I don't know what's been happening. They might have already said, nah, it's not for her. This is not going to happen for him. But the scripture says God began to magnify him exceedingly. To magnify something means to make it big, to make it large. They can't help but to see you. You have been magnified. And it said, God began to magnify Solomon. And in the magnifying of Solomon, God came to Solomon at night and he said, what would you like for me to do for you? God is saying, what do you want, baby? Come on, God is asking you on today, what do you want? Because God's about to favor you. But listen to what Solomon says. It is always important that when you have a conversation with God, that you make sure you ask for the thing that is actually the thing. What do I mean? So Solomon says, God says to Solomon, ask what you will and I'll give it to you. So Solomon says to God, he says, look, give me wisdom and knowledge. That's what you want. Wisdom and knowledge. You can ask God for anything, but that's what you ask for wisdom and knowledge. And he says, God, give me wisdom and knowledge so that I can lead these people because these are your people. They are great and mighty. And I'm here to tell you on my job, I pray this prayer. I say, God, give me wisdom. Give me knowledge so that I know how to answer people when they ask me a question. I'm, come on, I'm giving you a platform here. I'm telling you what to do. God, give me wisdom and knowledge so that when I go into the boss's office, I give him the right answer. Give me wisdom and knowledge so when someone comes and asks me about who you are, I can tell them who you are. Because Apostle Tony says, we have to be ready to give every man an answer for the hope that lies within us. We have to be ready. He says, not only are we preaching the gospel, we have to defend the gospel. So you have to be ready with an answer. So Solomon says, God, give me wisdom. Give me knowledge so that I know how to go in and out before your people. Because if you don't go in and out properly, you can mess it up. And so God says to him, this is what you're asking out of your heart. He said, you didn't ask me for money. You didn't ask me for wealth. You didn't ask me for fame. You didn't even ask me to deal with those enemies. You know, those naysayers, those talky back ones. You didn't even ask me to deal with them. He said, you didn't even ask me for long life. Because God said, ask of me anything you want and I'm going to give it to you. So there's a lot of options on the table for Solomon. But all Solomon wants is wisdom and knowledge. How to go in and out before your people. 
how to lead your people, how to be a light in this dark and decaying world, how to be salt, which is a savor for this world, how to let my light shine bright so that I emulate and I reflect you. That's all Solomon wanted. And that's what we're supposed to be. And so listen to what God says in verse 11 and 12. God answered Solomon. He said, this that's coming out of your heart is interesting. He says, because you ask for wisdom and knowledge, I'm going to give it to you. You get what you ask for. And then he says, I'm, I'm presenting you the rest as a bonus. Nah, y'all didn't hear that. Y'all didn't hear that. Y'all sitting too quiet. God says, I'm presenting you the rest as a bonus. I'm presenting you with money, wealth, and fame beyond anything that the kings before you or after you have ever heard of. God said, because all you wanted was this thing right here, wisdom and knowledge, I'm going to give you a bonus. How many of y'all need a bonus? God said, I'm going to give you a bonus. That's favor. That's favor. Favor gives you more than you can even conceptualize in your mind. And because Samuel was crowned, Solomon was crowned with favor, it says even the queen of Sheba came because she could not believe how smart and intelligent this man was. And she declared even the half had not been told of all God had given him to him. The half has not been told about all God has in store for you. The stories has not yet been written about the buildings that you're about to own. The story has not been written yet about the things that God is about to drop in your life because favor is not just for you right now, but favor is a heritage for the people of God. Favor is your birthright. And when you understand that the heritage of the Lord is favor and your birthright is favor, you will understand that even to the second and the third generation, everything coming out of your loin, everything coming out of you is favored. Favor. It's favored. And so people will say, well, the door can't open. Hallelujah. But God said, I'll open doors that no man can shut. So don't count me out. Don't be so quick to take my paperwork and put it at the bottom. Because when you put it at the bottom, God will make all of the paperwork fall over. And when they try to put it back in order, hey, glory, my paperwork goes to the top. Don't play with my God. Don't play with my God. Hallelujah. You may take my loan application and say, well, you know, they don't have this, they don't have that, and put me there and say, well, they can't get that. Hallelujah. But God will favor me and have someone step in and say, oh, oh, let me call this person and tell them they got it. Don't play with me. The God that I serve is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think. When God begins to favor you, people are so amazed they don't know what to say or what to do. That's why the old mothers would say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, come on, who has that testimony? If it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? What would I be? Because God favored me. And so when testimony service would go and the mothers would get up and they would begin to testify about the favor of God, they couldn't even get it all out. They would just begin to shout because God has been so good and so overwhelming in their lives that they couldn't even contain themselves. Hallelujah. Favor, 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 favor. Favor comes by relationship. Because it says here that Jesus increased in wisdom and favor with God and with man. So we know the God part. Let's check out the man part. When God gives you favor with men. So in the book of Luke chapter 5, verse 2, the story recounts that Jesus came to the shore and he saw two boats and he saw men washing their nets. Sometimes we start washing our nets a little bit too early. And they were washing their nets because they had been out fishing and they had caught nothing. 
And so as far as they were concerned, that was the end of the day. Tell somebody it's not the end. It's not the end. And so Jesus spoke to Simon and said if he could use his boat, he wanted to teach from the boat. And Simon let Jesus use the boat. Sometimes God will have people to come and ask you, can I borrow a cup of ice or can I borrow something and you give it to them? Okay, and you, in your mind, that's the end of it. Hallelujah. But that's not the end. That is be only the beginning. That is only the beginning. And so at the conclusion of Jesus' teaching, he turns to Peter, to Simon, and he says, Go ahead and launch out. And you know how we are. You, you don't understand. The day is done. I caught nothing. With God, all things are possible. Sometimes the favor that you need, you are sitting right on top of it, and you are blocking it from coming because your mouth is hindering the favor that God's about to put into your life. You are talking yourself out of what God is walking you into. Let me try that again. You are talking yourself out of what God is walking you into. And so he is telling God, he's telling Jesus, these are all the reasons why it makes no sense for me to get in this boat and go back out. We were out there, we tried, we got nothing. How many of y'all been out there? You tried, you got nothing. God is saying, try again. Try again. And so they went out, threw the nets down. And the scripture said when they threw the nets down, they caught a large number of fish. The number of fish was so great that they had to go get their fellow fishermen to bring their boats to come on help. The blessing of the Lord is going to overtake you in such a way that it's not only going to come over your house, Elder Rick Perry, but it's going to the next person. It's going into Deanna's house and it's going into Crystal's house. That's how God's blessings are. They will overtake you in such an abundance that you have enough for not only your house. That's favor. So not only did Simon get blessed, but all the other boats got blessed. That's the favor of God. The favor of God overflows. No wonder David said, my cup runneth over. <laughs> Anybody cup have ever run over? See, the way y'all sitting sometimes, people would think, well, I guess God ain't done nothing for them. <laughs> but when you understand that the God that I serve is a God that runs over my cup, when I'm not expecting my cup to be filled, he pours into my cup and my cup starts running over to the point I have more than enough. I got enough for me. I got enough for my children. I got enough for my grandchildren. Why? Because God is running over my cup with favor. With favor. And my favor is not based on how good I am, how pretty I look, if my hair is done, if my nails is done. My favor is based on my relationship with him. Do you know him? Do you know him? And so they had more than enough. Because the God we serve is a God of more than enough. The God we serve is a God that bankrupt Egypt. Because God will bankrupt everything for you. That's why the Bible says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the? Come on, y'all know the Bible. The Bible says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the who? I am the just because God justified me. God will never let you be without. He will let you never, never, ever let you be without because he is favoring you. So when you look at situations, do not look at it through the lens of 2020. 2020 lens shows you that's what it looks like. And your response will be, that's what it is. But when you look at it through the lens of heaven, when you look at life through the lens of Christ, 
through the lens of your God and what he is able and capable of doing, hallelujah, you will realize that your God is El Gabor. He is strong and mighty. Your God is Jehovah Jireh. He is a provider. He is your Jehovah Shammah, the one that is there. So there is no reason for you to sit back and say, this is it. It is never it. It is never it. Don't count me out. You've got to understand this thing called favor. It ain't fair. It's not fair. And because it's not fair, you feel that you should get it. And I shouldn't get it. You feel that your resume is the resume. But how many of y'all know I got a resume in heaven? The old mothers used to say, I'm sending up timber. <laughs> but oh, glory to God. I've been sending up prayers. I've been reading. I've been interceding. And so, in the words of the mother, I've been sending my timber up. And so favor, favor will come into your life in such a way that all you can say truly, it is God's doing. It's God's doing. The favor of God sometimes, it, 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 it just becomes so unexplainable because you know that you didn't do nothing for it. You know that everything around you said no. And so people will begin to question you. And because they're going to question you, I want to show you how favor will cause people to not celebrate you. You would think that people will celebrate you. They know you were hungry. They know you were thirsty. And now you got some food and something to drink. They upset with you. Because they don't understand favor. So let's look at John 9, 25. Because I want to show you what it means to be favored and how people could get upset with you when you're favored. And John... 925, there's a blind man, and he was blind from birth. And the scripture said that people began to ask, who sinned? Was it his parents or was it him? And Jesus said, none of that is happening here. But the man is blind so that the works of God might be displayed in him. Tell your neighbor, God's works is going to be displayed in me. So it may seem like nothing is going on, like I'm down and I'm downtrodden and I'm down on four flat tire. But God's work is about to be displayed in me. And so Jesus called the man forth, and the man cannot see, and I'm sure that people had to bring him forth. And Jesus put spit on the man's eye, and he says to the man, go. And I'm sure because the man could not see, people had to take him where he had to go. He says, go to the pool of Shalom and washed. And the scripture said that the man washed, and he went home. He didn't come back to Jesus. He went home seeing. Now it is interesting. This is what happens in our lives when God has favored us. So the first people he runs into is the neighbors. Tell your neighbor, there's some neighbors. They're going to be chatting because they're going to have some questions about what just happened. How did you get favored? So the neighbors and those who had formerly seen him, those people that had seen him previously in the day, blind and someone helping him, they are all looking and they're saying, wait a minute, this man is wet and he has on the clothes like the beggar that we saw earlier, but there's no one helping him to walk. And so they're questioning, is this the man? So the others, because you're going to have some others, they said, no, can't be him. It only looks like him. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, when God favors you, people say, well, it can't be that person. Is it that person? Ha <laughs> ha. Yes, it is. So then the first thing, after they asked him, he began to testify. When God favors you, testify. Don't keep it to yourself testify. And so the man began to say, look, my eyes have been opened. And they say, nah, it can't be so. You would think that they would celebrate you. They knew you were blind. You couldn't see, you had to beg. But now that you can see and you can go get a job and not beg, you would really believe that people would celebrate you. But they don't want to celebrate the man. They want to know what happened. How did it happen? And the key things that they're all upset about is one simple thing, that God favored him. 
So the Pharisees came, and they want to investigate the scenario. So now, Minister Deanna Nix, you just got favored, and here's the first question they ask you. Who did it? His reply, Jesus did it. What happened? He took spit and put it on my eyes. And what happened next? Where did you go? I went to the pool of Shalom and washed. Well, when did this happen? It happened on the Sabbath. Hold up, we got a problem. He ain't supposed to be doing this on the Sabbath day. Wait a minute, it doesn't matter when he did it. The fact is I'm no longer blind. You should celebrate me. But they're too busy doing the five W's. Why did it happen? But it's the why I like. So that the works of God might be displayed in me. So why did God favor you? So that the works of God can be displayed in me. Why did God favor you to the right? So that the works of God can be displayed in you. Why did God favor you? So that the works of God can be displayed in you. Come on. Why did God favor you? So that the works of God can be displayed in you. God wants to display his work in you. So while they're so busy arguing about the five W's, God says, look, the only thing that is important is the why. So that I can display my works in you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I told you about those naysayers. So they're still confused. Why Deanna Nix? So now they say, go get the parent. God ever bless you and people just can't believe it's you. Go get Elder Rick. Elder Rick, did Deanna actually get a house? Yeah, she did. I was there when she closed and she signed the paperwork because they just can't believe. They just can't believe. So they go get his parents. And they said, is this your son? Yes, I gave birth to him. That's my son. How does he see? Look, he old enough. He can tell you. That's what the parents said. He's old enough. He can tell you. And so they asked him again, how is it that you see? <laughs> because people just can't accept that God has favored you. <laughs> Glory to God. They just can't accept it, that you became the exception to the rule, that you didn't have to go step one, step two, step three. They don't understand that God took all of those steps out of the way and said, here you are. They can't accept that. And so the man says, look. I don't know nothing but one thing. I was blind, but now I see. I was without, but now I'm within. The door was shut, but now the door is open. I was sick, but now I'm healed. I had nothing, now I got something. Why? Because God has crowned me with favor. God crowned me with favor. So I have favor coming, favor going. Every morning I wake up, I walk in favor. Everything about me is favor. And so while you're trying to process it, hallelujah, I'm over here giving God the glory because of favor. God's favor will put you in front of some people, hallelujah that they would think that you're not supposed to be in front of. So Nehemiah, hallelujah, he was the king's cupbearer, and my time is out. It's almost out. But as the king's cupbearer, God favored him in such a way that the king not only gave him everything that he needed to go back and build a wall and the gates, but he even gave him enough for him to build a house for himself. God will give you more than enough. There's a more than enough that comes with the favor of God. There is a more than enough that is overflowing, but we have got to operate from the aspect and understand that I am crowned with favor. So when you start your business and they say, oh, that ain't going to happen. The Bible says despise not small beginnings. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Don't despise it. There is favor on you. Regardless of what it looks like, regardless of what they say, there is a grace upon your life. And that grace is the favor of God.
that will overshadow you, that will cover you, that will compass you in such a way that you would declare, it is the Lord's doing. Come on, say it with me. It is the Lord's doing. It is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our sight. Come on, say it with me. It is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our sight. Come on, stand to your feet.